Hey guys, what's going on? It's your boy Saglitch, aka Sag. And remember last week when I told you some embarrassing stories? Well, here's another one. Well, it's not really embarrassing, more as like just funny and just so you know, my style. But um, I guess I will tell you the story of my senior year of college and how I was almost kicked out of a hospital for visiting my roommate. So, okay, and my roommate, my senior year, uh, he was my roommate for three years, and uh, we're really, really good buddies. And so he um, he got sick uh, during the spring, I think, or um, during the winter, one, one, of the, one of the times of the year. And um, at first it was like it, it was like rheumatic fever, and then he, he just had like a cough, and like because of the breaths he took, he took short breaths, which helped it develop into something worse and making it pneumonia. So basically, uh, he got treated for that as well, and it just kept getting worse and worse, and you know, him being the good guy that he was, he wasn't trying to get anyone else sick. So he basically, at night, he uh, moved his stuff downstairs into the living room so he can sleep and give everyone their peace and even myself. And me, I have a high tolerance of uh, a high tolerance of sickness and I have a pretty good immune system. So I wasn't really worried about it. So, you know, I figured if he was on another couch, I could, you know, I could be there with him so he doesn't have to spend his nights alone and bored and all that so one day while in classroom I had class all day football practice um, but I had an evening class and so when I got out of the evening class I saw that there were like five or six missed calls from the guys that we lived with well once I called them back they told me that my roommate was in the hospital and they're like Hey, uh, you know, no worries, we're all here, but when you get a chance, you might want to come in. So, you know, I, I wanted to be there because he's, he's, he's my best friend, you know. I wanted to be, I wanted to let him know that we're there for him. So, uh, you know, I, I got my stuff, I got a little bit of stuff before um, I went to the hospital. And went in and saw all the guys I live with just out in the um, waiting room. And they said that no one has been able to see him yet because of the fact that he was uh, being looked at by the doctor. And they wanted to take a quick look at him first. And so uh, so we're all just sitting there talking, hanging out. And we weren't really scared for his health as far as, uh, you know, thinking he's going to die. He's a pretty healthy dude. And uh, we just, you know, we wanted to be there just to make sure everything was okay. So... Basically, what happened was the doctor came out and said, Hey, um, who wants to go in? We can have one visitor at a time. And, of course, the natural selection was me. And um, so I went in. And we were just hanging out. And uh, so um, we were just talking. I was making sure he was okay. I was asking if he needed anything from the uh, house or anything like that. And naturally, just said no. And we're just talking, seeing, you know, we're just, I'm making sure my buddy's okay and making sure he's not too worried about this. So, uh, I go outside and see if anyone else wants to see him. And just so happens that they went to go get dinner without me. So I'm like, hey, thanks, you guys. You know, it's not like I was hungry or anything. So, you know, they, they're just sitting there eating and. All the guys or whatever, they go see him and spend like 15 minutes with him. And then we basically rotate that until everybody's gone and sing. Well, the guys decide that, hey, you know, we're going to go back to the house since he's okay. And uh, we'll let you just hang out with him for a while. So I go back in there and he's getting his blood drawn and whatnot. And so they're just doing some studies on me. And I'm yeah, okay, you know, whatever. And so we're just sitting there uh, talking, BSing. And um, so I asked him, I was like, hey, you want anything to eat? And the nurse is like, well, you can't get him anything. And I look at Tim, I'm like, you want me? Like, I whisper, I was like, you want anything to eat? It's just, uh, 
This nurse is kind of bitchy. He's like, no, I'm, I think I might need to do what the uh, what the nurse says. So I'm like, all right, whatever. So um, I'm like, I'll go get some whenever I leave here, you know. And so we're just sitting there, whatever. And the nurse leaves, and there's this rinky-dink television, and we're like, we he has it on, but he's not really watching it, and so, you know, I I, I see him just a little worried, and so. I'm like, all right, well, let's just BS. And so we start talking about stuff just around and just l start laughing and whatever. And uh, sit there and start thinking. I was like, hey, you remember that movie One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest? And he's like, yeah. And so if you guys don't know, it's Jack Nicholson. He's in the uh, mental institution. And uh, basically what happened. It's, it's a really sad movie, but it's a really well done movie. So it's... Anyway... So we decided to reenact the uh, last scene where his uh, friend, just to uh, um, prevent him from living a life of vegetative state, decides to kill him with a pillow. So I grab one of Tim's pillow and we start laughing. I'm like, shh, just go into the light. Just go into the light. It's okay. And I start fluffing it up. And I put it over his head, just joking. And he's like, he's sitting there squirming. And we're just reliving it. And the nurse just so happens to walk in and say, what the hell are you guys doing? And we both just start laughing because I'm like, I, we're just joking, man. You know, there's no worries. He's okay. I'm just messing with him. And so I'm like trying to explain to her the reenactment of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. And she's like, I don't know that movie. You guys are retarded. And so, um, so we do that, and so we're still sitting there laughing, and, uh, just, you know, we're making fun of her, we're laughing, whatever, and she's trying to take his blood pressure, and if you guys don't know, or his heart rate and blood pressure, and if you guys don't know, you have to be, like, somewhat relaxed, somewhat still, and, you know, just hanging out to get it done. Well... We didn't realize it until afterwards, and we're just like, we're sitting there still laughing, and she goes, all right, guys, that's enough, and so we're like, all right, all right, and then we started laughing again, and she's starting to get pretty upset with us, and she goes, all right, that's enough, seriously, I gotta take his blood pressure, this is super important for him, so we stop, and she leaves, just so he can calm down, and I start making him laugh even more than he did before. And she's like, she looks at me, and she goes, stop. And I'm like, okay. And you know those times where, you know, you're like, someone says to stop, and you're in that, like, you're laughing so much that you just try, and it's even funnier to, like, just try to stop than it is actually stopping. Well, I'm like, okay. <laughs> and then she goes, all right, seriously, if you don't stop, I'm gonna kick you out of the room. I'm like, oh snap! <laughs> like she's getting serious. And so, finally, I had to leave the room for a couple minutes and come back. And um, it's funny because every time my roommate would laugh, he would start coughing real bad. And at the same time, he's like, "Stop making me laugh!" But I'm sitting here thinking, I'm like, you know, he's having a good time. He's relaxing. He's trying to. He, he, you know, he's trying to feel better and trying to not be as uh, worried as he um, is. So, it's a good and bad thing. So, I don't know what to do, you know. I don't know if it's a good enough payoff to stop making him laugh and not have him worried. So, eventually, um, you know, I come back, he gets everything done. And he's hooked up to all these machines. I start making him laugh again. His heart rate starts getting up, and they they're worried, so they come check on him. And the nurse goes, "If I have to come in here one more time, you're out." And so by that time, guys, you know I had to stop. Enough was enough. And so it's just it, it was just it was a great time. It was one of the most memorable times in college. Uh, also, if you have a roommate that's super sick, um, and you know you're trying to help them out and stuff, don't. You guys can't use them as an excuse to not go to class, like an early class. And guys, 
I had early classes every single semester of college, 8 o'clock classes, and it's just how my schedule worked out, um, but, uh, I, you know, at first he was in, he was in my class with me in that morning, and so I would use him as an excuse for not coming to class, but, uh, eventually the teacher got wary of it, and so I had to stop doing it. <laughs> I had to, I had to stop saying, hey, you know, I was going to visit my roommate, I had to make sure he's got everything, whatever, and so, you know, even though you're worried about him and stuff, and even though I was worried about him, I was using him more of an excuse to get out of my stuff than <laughs> bringing him anything, making sure he's okay. But, um, yeah, no, and guys, just, you know, it, it was a great time. It was one of those times that, you know, you always remember, and that's basically why I can't go with my friends to the hospital because I almost get kicked out every time. Because I'm, you know, I try to be the funny one of the group. I try to make them laugh, try to make them relax, and uh, that's what happens when you do that. So, uh, yeah. But, um, I figured I would share this story with you guys. I, you know, it's one of my cherished, cherished memories, and uh, we had a great time. So, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the story. Uh, I know it's not really embarrassing to me, but it's uh, really funny. Uh, I honestly wish you guys could have saw the uh, the camera uh, point of view where I was trying to choke him out with a pillow. It was just it's something different. But uh, that's it, the game. So that means that's the end of my story. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, it looks like I went 52 and 7. So I finally broke 52 or 50 kills in a domination game. Oh, wait, it's Ground War. Doesn't matter. Anyway, guys, leave a like if you did. Comment if you want and subscribe if you haven't. And let me know if you guys have been kicked out of the hospital before. I'll see you next time.